Hey everybody, Jeff Harmon, phototacopodcast.com. I wanted to put together a video that kind of walks through what I'm hoping will be helpful <laughs> for photographers who use my buying guides in order to buy photography equipment, uh, mostly computers. My aim with my buying guides is to try to provide information to photographers in different ways so that you can make an informed decision about buying something. Um, mostly these guides are for computers and in particular I've done most of them have been for Apple computers, but I have a few other guides out there too and I plan to build more of these kinds of guides. I find photographers tend to overbuy as they go to buy something. Um, because they don't have any technical spec experience or understanding to be able to make a decision, especially with Apple computers. A lot of photographers have become used to using a Mac. They like the Mac, but when it comes to buying a new one or when they feel like their Mac is just really slowing down, they don't have a clue what they should be buying as they go to buy a new one. And so they tend to just overbuy like, well, the max I can spend on this is like the $4,000. So I'm just going to configure this thing until it gets about four grand and hope that's good, good enough. My aim is to try to help photographers be able to make an educated decision without having to understand the full specs of the thing that they're buying. And I'm trying to follow a consistent format to be able to do that. I, I think it's become helpful if you have feedback on ways I can improve it that I'd, I'd love to hear from you, but that's, that's my aim. And I try to do it in a few different ways. So I wanted to show you how that works today. So here, here's one of my most recent guide. It happens to be the M3 MacBook pro guide, but this should be kind of applicable across all of them. As I show you how to look at the information, consume the information, I'm hoping it will help you be able to understand how to use all of my buying guides, regardless of what the, the technical thing is that we're buying. Okay. So the very first thing to point out is I have this this paragraph in bold up at the top. And I should have that across most, if not all of my buying guides. I did start coming up with this more recently. So there may be some that don't have it, but the recent ones will all have this where I'm just straight up telling you what most photographers should do as they're buying an M3 MacBook Pro in this case. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you the base model 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. I give you a tech spec here of eight core CPU and 10 core GPU. And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. It doesn't matter. It just has to be there because those are the labels that Apple's going to have on their website. So here's Apple's website and you can see eight core CPU, 10 core GPU. So I need to make it match what they have there. Um, and then I'm telling you there's an and here. They should upgrade. Most photographers should upgrade to 16 gigabytes of unified memory. Again, you don't really have to understand what that means. It's just a label of something that you're going to, I'm saying it's worth buying. And then your final price should be 1800 bucks. And this is, should last most photographers three to five years. So that's kind of my aim. Most photographers. What does that mean? Well, in this case, I'm talking about photographers who mostly do uh, work in Lightroom, some work in Photoshop, maybe the occasional use of a Topaz or a DxO plugin, something like that. But it's mostly Lightroom work and, and it's not speaking to any level of experience between beginning photographers up through professional photographers. They, they have similar needs as far as computer goes for the most part. I've worked with a lot of photographers over the years. I kind of know what it is that most of them need. And those who have like specialty needs where they might need a little bit more computer than, than the average, we'll call it most photographers, they'll know that and they'll have the budget for it and they'll kind of be able to do it. And they probably don't need my guide. So that my, my, this is aimed more at people that, you know, they, they, they don't have specialized needs for their photo editing. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. If you don't care about any of the specs, any of the details, any of the gory, the, the dense information that I have in the rest of the guide, then you're done. And you can come here to Apple's site. I said 14 inch, you're gonna pick that. I said this eight core, 10 core GPU. And, and one of the things to key off on is I say base model. So that means it's gonna be this lower end one. Um, you don't have to worry then about what's the difference between these two, because they look a lot the same. And that's right, you shouldn't. And I will try in my guides to be able to, to guide you a little bit to say like if, if it was this middle one that you should have chosen, then I would have said mid-level 14 inch MacBook Pro. Okay, so it's the base model. So you would pick this 
And then as you come here, you can see it defaults to eight gigabytes of unified memory. Well, that's in the next statement. 16 gigabytes is what I'm recommending. Oh, here's 16 gigabytes. It's 200 bucks. Yep, I should pick that and look. Oh, I now, oh, and sorry, I, I was in this configurator before. I didn't say to upgrade the storage. So this is it. And I'm at my price of 1800 bucks done. I now have my computer. I'm ready to add it to the bag, go buy it. And I have confidence that as a photographer with that spends my time in Lightroom and Photoshop and doesn't have any kind of specific needs, this is going to last me three to five years. I'm good to go. Awesome, right? But if you're like, I just don't know, I don't, or you're one who understands the specs a little bit more, you want to understand, or you might have some more specific needs, I do have more information in the guides. Now you're going to need to go past just this um, most photographers basic recommendation, and you have this table that can help you to be able to make a decision. So same information, we're starting with the 14 inch M3 eight core GP CPU eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, same, same information here. And I tried in these tables to make it so that they're small. I'm so I, I leave, I trying not to put too much text in the table so that they're consumable on a mobile device and you can get through this guide on a mobile device. It's, it's a little bit harder cause you can't do like, like I have here with one browser on the left and another browser on the right to, to go and do it. This is definitely easier to follow the guide um, in this fashion, but this is, uh, it, I, I tried to make it as easy as possible on a mobile device as well. So you, you have this and I'm saying it's not enough for most photographers. Most photographers are gonna wanna upgrade. Now that's true, but I have more information down below. We'll get to that in a second about you can get by with the default eight gigabytes if you really have to. If this if this budget of sixteen hundred dollars is just like all you can do is get to the sixteen hundred dollars, that's gonna be hard. You can still use the computer and it's still gonna work okay um, for photo editing needs, but there may be some limitations and I go into that that information. Um, okay, so I, I tell you the sixteen gigabytes upgrades. We've already been through that. But here's where the those who want to make more informed choices where you'll get some better results using the tables. So now I also have the next recommended upgrade, which by the way, these are in prioritized order. If I had the certain budgets, this is how I would go and upgrade them. So if you, if you can only get to 2000, you can't get to 2200, then this is the, the order I would do it. They are swappable. I mean, you could, you would still be able to get to $2,200 um, if you switch the order here, but if you only had 2000, I'm telling you, this is the order you should upgrade things in. So, and then I give you some um, recommendations on what type of photographer would most benefit from this upgrade. So going from 16 gigabytes, let's look at that on the website. So you can see it as we go along, it going from 16 gigabytes to 24 gigabytes in the unified memory is recommended for photographers working with a 40 plus megapixel camera or more than 10 layers in Photoshop. So if you're consistently using Photoshop in a way where you have more than 10 layers, this is probably something you should consider. That's the point of this. And now you can evaluate for yourself, Am I? is that me? It, it, do I have either of those things um, or can I afford this too? Is, is this next $200? not a huge deal for me, then you may want to do that. And now you can, you have some information to help you to decide if this is an upgrade you want or not. And on you go one terabyte SSD. Well, in this case, it enables editing one photo session from an internal SSD, but most photographers are going to need an external drive. So that if that's something important to you, maybe a, a travel photographer, um, you, you want to be able to not have to drag around an external drive and be able to copy your images to a, your computer and edit them while you're on the go, then this might be ve well worth the money for you to be able to get that. But now you can, you have the information to help you to decide about what it is and, and on it goes on and on through, through all of this. Um, in the case of the M3 MacBook Pro, because we have the decision between 14 inches and 16 inches, then I also have a table for the 16 inch model. And I put some text in here, photographers who rarely be connected at home, then 16 inches is a no brainer for those photographers to get that extra screen real estate is a big deal. In previous versions of the MacBook Pro, 
this would be a big deal too because some of the power you couldn't actually configure uh, the machine to be as powerful uh, in the 14 inch model as in the 16 inch model. That's not the case here with the M3, but I have the tables for both so that if, if you know you are, you really want the 16 inch, um, here's the order for upgrading things. Same, same thing. Okay. So that ends those tables. And now I go for photographers who want even more information to be able to make a decision. Then you can get into the, some of the nitty gritty details uh, about how to make a decision. So the, I go through decision by decision on how to configure uh, your purchase of an M3 MacBook Pro. First one is should you upgrade at all? And I give, give you some advice there. Now decision two, 14 or 16 inch. And here's how you, how I recommend you decide between those system on a chip. What processor, GPU, CPU should we, you have in there? Should it be the base M3, the M3 pro, the M3 max, what matters, what other kind of implications are there? There's a lot of details here and on and on we go down to the decisions through, through all of them. So that's how I intend for this guide to be able to be used to help you kind of depending on what level of information you need to be able to make a decision on what you're going to buy in a computer, then this will help you or, or anything that I have a guide for. Uh, I'm, I'd love feedback on what kind of guides you, you would find helpful. The, it's definitely been helpful for me to be able to uh, provide these guides like this for Apple computers. But if there's others that I don't have, let me know and I, I will work to create those. I also wanted to share with you a tip. If you visit my website, you're probably going to have a different experience than what I'm showing here because I have ads on the site. Uh, putting these guides together is not trivial. It takes me uh, probably somewhere between 20 and 30 hours of work to kind of consider all the options, compare with the previous options, correlate my personal testing that I've done, correlate testing that others have done into making this guide so that it says real world as I can get it, not just based on like synthetic benchmarks or uh, light observations and um, it really informed kind of guide here. Um, but I, I want to have people who follow me, people who are listeners and, and really kind of um, investing in me as a, as a content provider to be able to have an ad free experience. So I'm going to share with you a way that you can get <laughs> to the pages and not have ads. Um, it's uh, please don't share that with anyone. Um, I, I'd really like them to find this through the content that I fall I'm, I'm providing. If you put this exact phrasing up here, this question mark, UTM underscore term equals YouTube. If you put that at the end of any URL on my website, then you get an ad free experience on that page. You have to put it on every page. I want to make this kind of like not completely trivial to be able to do it. But for those that are going to use these guides, I don't want the ads to detract from the usefulness of the guides. I want them to be helpful. So I'm offering a way to, uh, it'll, it'll, impact my ad revenue, but I, I want this to be helpful. So I'm sharing this tip about um, what how to do that question mark UTM underscore term equals YouTube. You just add that to the end of the URL and you get an ad free experience for these guides. I hope you find them helpful. I hope it helps you to be able to make a good choice as you are purchasing computers or other photography equipment. And let me know, uh, how it's, how it's going for you. Is it helpful? Is there something I can do to try to make it more helpful, more clear? If you find it uh, still very difficult, then I'd like to know and, and work with you to see if I can, I can help make it uh, even more useful over time. Thanks, everybody. I'll catch you later.